Saturday. And thank you guys for tuning in to your come up where on your come up, we talk about topics to help you come up business, finance, personal, spiritual, and physical. Today, we're going to have a conversation with the man, the voice, the legend who narrates all my audiobooks. And uh, we're going to talk about the, the ins and outs of the audiobook narrating business since we're going more digital these days. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell notification so you don't miss your come up. And timestamps will be in the description below. What should people know about before getting into the audiobook narrating business? Something that's good to know and good to have um, is having uh, a good place to record. It's it that's definitely probably the biggest hindrance is you're in the middle of a session and you keep getting stopped because water keeps running in the pipes that just happen to run by the closet where you're recording. So I think it, like if you if you don't have a good space where you know it could be relatively quiet and the sound can be dampened is really difficult to kind of get any momentum going in a business thing as you you can only record in a couple minute increments which is just mm -hmm. you know it's on top of being frustrating it's it's <laughs> so tedious it's it's hard to get any kind of you know energy going so i would say make sure that you have a place like that to record i mean it doesn't have to be perfect like obviously you're not going to get 100 percent quiet room you're not going to get like a special whisper booth to record mm -hmm. in if if you can't get that closet to record in you know, really try to find some some kind of place that could give you relative quiet. Um, and then the other thing I would say is uh, comfortability with with whatever software you're going to be recording on. I mean, whether that be Logic, Ableton, e even like GarageBand that you're, okay. you're recording on is, I mean, just having the like having uh, just get comfortable, like recording a little bit, figure out how to edit it, how to move things around to get get like figure out what the shortcuts are on whatever program that you're using. And that will, that's, that will save a lot of, a lot of headache and heartache and wow. always save, always save. If you, if you think that you've not saved, save uh, yeah, then, then, then save it because, because there have been some scary times when just the middle of editing and then all of a sudden that swirly bar or the swirly circle of death comes up. <laughs> it's like, did I just lose everything that I just recorded? So yeah. Oh man, you, you, it'll be a pandemic within a pandemic if that happens. Exactly. You have to say it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know you talked about software you use uh, mm -hmm. or e-thrust or something, but what equipment, let's say someone was serious about, well, hey, you know, on the weekends I can narrate a book or here or, or a book a month or something as an additional stream of income. What equipment is needed to start uh, narrating audiobooks and what equipment do you use? Things like our, our smartphones have come so far and they're so like, competent that definitely very possible to record a decent sounding thing off of even your even your phone, your iPhone, your, your Android. You can you can buy uh, at the very least like kind of on the cheaper end microphones. They can just plug right in to your to your phone and record in, into that, upload it to like a free software, like a garage band, which is usually gonna be on your computer already. But basically what you need is bare minimum you need a mic to record into um i i would recommend at least above you know speaking right into your phone because that's just not i i <laughs> doubt you'll get any work that way what about um, headphones you're, into your you're, phone maybe yeah yeah you're, okay. i mean you're welcome to try but you know okay. like this is not a great great at picking up audio that people are going to want to listen to you don't need super complicated software for audiobooks because you're not um, as long as you can fix kind of like your levels, it, it's not it's not incredibly involved. And then a space to record. And the thing is, the good thing about audiobooks is that a lot of us already have a decent space is just the closet. Like I can sit in my closet and I have clothes on this side, I have clothes on this side, and then the mic's just right here. I have my computer or iPad set up, which I'm reading off of. I also use uh, a, a, like an acoustic shield, like a reflector shield to help with acoustics. Um, okay. So yeah, so going into what I use, I use for a mic um, uh, M Audio Nova Black, and then I the, the program that I use is Ableton Live, okay. and I actually use an audio interface, um, the Scarlett Focusrite 2i2, and that just helps process the the sound before it goes into Ableton, and that's like a more advanced thing, just because I also do music um, as well. So you don't you don't need that stuff, but the higher quality things you have can help 
the recording a lot. And then of course I have, I have the closet that I use and you know, an ideal room would be, you know, a nice acoustically treated room where there's no <laughs> solid hard walls anywhere, but a, I don't have the money to, uh, to build one. We gotta, we gotta work with what we got. I mean, exactly. I mean, I film my, all my YouTube videos and I edit all my YouTube videos on this bad boy right here. So, mm -hmm. and it, it's working just fine. But yeah. I had to invest in storage, you know? So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you're getting a couple gigs. I found you through ACX, the audio book exchange um, or creation exchange. How do you attract authors or customers to get audiobook narrating jobs or, or gigs? So uh, it depends on whatever site you're using. I know there's ACX is also voices.com mm -hmm. um, or it, what have you. Um, the people will post their books and have and essentially open auditions. And in there, they the, each each book is, you know, it's an author's baby. They care a lot about it. So although you're seeing a bunch of auditions right there on the screen in front of you, this book is very special to the author. They spend so much time and, and effort on it mm -hmm. that when they include notes in the audition, um, you really want to pay attention to what they're saying because that's very much how they, I mean, that's how they want it read. That's how they want to hear it. And so uh, being able to apply those notes well to your audition, I think really does does make a difference um, in terms of in terms of them actually liking you and, and booking you. And so the best audition you can put forward, the best sound you can put forward is your own. You know, everybody's voice is unique and everybody's voice has has specific, you know, qualities that make it that make it iconic to themselves. I would also say lean into what makes you special and lean into what makes your voice unique and don't try to be someone else. I mean, like take the notes and 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 you know, like put effort into doing what the author wants, but also don't try to go over the top because the fact of the matter is the more you try to be like someone else, you're just trying to do an imitation of what somebody else is already doing naturally. So the best version, the best audition you can put forward is the best you you can be. As cheesy as that sounds, no one can do an impression of your voice as well as you can do your own voice. Hey, so true. yeah. That's very true. Yeah. You know, um, there's no other person like you than you. So <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Our, so I think I, the next question I was going to ask is tips for success in audiobook narrating. Now, I think you pegged one of them right on the head. Be you, do you, just be mm -hmm. Just do you. Any other tips you could shed on that you feel that you may have not have touched on just yet? Yeah, um, I, I mean, going along that same line as well as like being you, the, the difference in audiobook and like voiceover, um, per se, because a lot of people might get into audiobooks because they're passionate about voiceover or maybe they do voiceover. Or you could just work um, at home in your pajamas, you know? Yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> that as well, yeah. But it's that it, there's, a, oftentimes you'll be doing novels and in the novels, you have different characters and you want to distinguish the characters. And so if you were doing something like voiceover, in voiceover, I can sit there and I can give you take after take of a single line of a character. And I can make it a crazy, zany, quirky character with, it's like stretching like the the, the ability of my voice to, to its max. And it's fine because I can take do a take and I can rest. I can do another take, I can rest. I can, I can take all the time I want to record that line. But in an audiobook, you need to be able to, you know, sometimes do like four or five hours of straight speaking, switching between characters. The fact of the matter is it's so much more taxing on your voice than voiceover because you're also on top of doing character voices. You're probably also reading a narration that's going through oh. as well as switching between other voices. And so that alone is extremely tiring. So on top of that, trying to do, you know, some crazy like <laughs> voice for someone, it's it is not sustainable and you'll that find sounds yourself... like a salesman like a failed salesman kind of place. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i mean you'll just you'll just find that, that you burn yourself out like real fast and i've definitely had to go i mean it's it was it was a big like curve endurance curve vocally mm -hmm. um i thought that i had good vocal endurance before but when i first started recording audiobooks i realized that it, it wasn't nothing you know i needed to really really spend time in the booth recording to build up my ability to to record for long periods of time and so the characters that you do they can't be so extreme that they're gonna just blow out your voice and then your recording your recording session is stopped you mm -hmm. can't record anymore i mean it's gonna take longer to record this the, the book as a whole it's gonna take more time to edit 
right. and it's also lower quality it's lower energy and so my recommendation would be to do voices that are that are like differentiate the voices for sure but don't do voices so crazy that they're going to extremely tire you out like make them sustainable make them make them slight changes but don't really lean into them because that i mean it's it way too exhausting you know? I like I like when you said vocal endurance. That's why I was cracking up. I was thinking like someone putting on their dating profile. I have really good vocal endurance. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but speaking on vocal endurance, because you know I can understand it's taxing. You're transitioning a scene and narration. Do you drink water to to uh, to expand or increase or or have a longer, more vocal dur duration? Or is there certain foods that kind of I know Indian food that's gassy, or, mm -hmm. or it's delicious, but you probably don't want to eat that before you're recording an audio or, or novel right people have different you know tips and tricks of, of the trade in terms of right things to eat and things to avoid high fiber things might make your your stomach uh <laughs> like bubble or whatever also if you're hungry i've had sessions where it's been a lot more difficult because i haven't eaten enough yet and mm -hmm. so my stomach is just grumbling because i'm trying to get through the session before lunch i think uh lip balm works a lot because it helps stop like the sticky oh, smack yeah. of, of your lips. Uh, saliva is also a big thing uh, to worry about. Um, so, I mean, I just drink straight water. Um, I'll take breaks every couple minutes to make sure I'm s just sipping on, on water. Um, some people use tea. Um, I know you can use like throat coat. So if you've had a long session and you want to like kind of recover your voice and maybe feeling a little raw, right. you can drink throat coat. It'll help, you know, ease, ease the pain. Um, or people, some people do honey as well. Kind of, it's, it soothes it. Um, I personally think the best thing is, is just straight water, just hydrating. And, you know, it's, there's nothing extra. Your body technically, biologically was only made to drink water and everything else above that is extra. So oh, I no, 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 I like a good beer. Don't, don't <laughs> yeah. buzz kill that. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, you can drink beer for your recording session, but your voice is going to be a lot it's going to dry it out. It's going to be all <laughs> croakier. All right. After the yeah. session. So, so, so maybe if you're trying to record like a bass thing, then, then, you know, a, a, a couple of drinks the night before, or, yeah. or I guess the, the day of might, might be good. My recommendation is definitely water. Um, in terms of foods. Yeah. I guess foods that just don't make you too gassy. I mean, stomach murmurs are a thing that happen quite frequently. Some people swear by like a uh, like granny Smith apples. Mm -hmm. They say like it takes away the saliva and it's just like mm. such a good thing for you to eat before. So I, I like I think everybody has like their own things they experiment with and they swear that they work. Just kind of know your body and know what things really help and know what things don't. I don't think I don't think there's a one size fit all recommendation for everybody. Right. Now it's gonna um, take little tidbits, you know. Yeah. I mean you can try it. <laughs> Hey, uh, I mean I'm not narrating audiobooks, but mm -hmm. hey, you never know yeah. who, who's watching that may consider it. Last question hourly rates because it's per narrated hour uh, audiobook narrators are paid for so it's not the setup it's not the after taking equipment or part the equipment or whatever it's you record whatever duration you record that's your hourly rate how would you suggest one to uh, determine their hourly rate or is there any other other methods of paying in case you know what screw the hourly rate this is how i like to get paid or what, what are your tips on that through acx i know there are a few different ways you can do royalty share which is um that that means that all of the audiobook uh profits get split uh, 50 50 between the the rights holder mm -hmm. and the narrator the second way is royalty share plus which means you get um some negotiated percentage usually it's going to be less than 50 percent of the profits of the audiobooks go toward the narrator and the copyright holder gets the rest but you do get a stipend at like the end of recording like once you finish so it's okay. usually like a hundred dollars so usually it'll mean like oh I, i'm going to get a hundred dollars for recording your book and i'm going to get you know like 20 percent of the profits from the audiobook but just depending on what you've negotiated with okay. with the rights holder or the author and the final way is per finished hour um, which like as you said is not is not the hours that you spend working on it it's the hours of finished audio that you present so if it's a three hour book once it's finally recorded edited you know finished then you will get paid three hours and so i think going into i also i mean i had difficulty kind of figuring out where it was 
that I would start because you can't look at it like, oh, I'm making, you know, $15 an hour as if it was like a minimum wage thing. Right. It's harder to gauge. I kind of went off of what I saw on a site already. I knew I had pretty decent equipment. I knew I was an experienced actor. They could, they could bring like more to this. I listened to a bunch of other narrators and, and like the quality of their recordings and the rates they were charging. And so I kind of use that as a gauge, but also, I mean, authors post their, their books with like the, the amount they're willing to pay already. So I don't really have a set price. I'm usually more like negotiating each time, but there is, I think what really helped was actually documenting. All right. This is how long I spent reading the book. All right. This is how long I spent recording the book. This is how long I spent editing the book and I tracked it all like an Excel and actually built up how many hours am I putting into this project and then dividing that by how much I'm actually getting paid at the end and realizing, okay, this is how much I'm making actually like an hour of, of, of time of effort. And I think that's a good way to gauge kind of is what you're doing, you know, worth the, the effort that you're putting in. Yeah. But then you think about how many hours you're going to spend recording. Cause I mean, you, you can like, if it's a three hour book and it will easily take six plus hours to do the whole thing because there's all the recording which is definitely going to be six hours mm -hmm. plus all the mistakes you can probably add let's say nine hours on that of of recording plus the editing uh is going to be another you know three hours or or more um and then you have to uh listen to the whole thing and make sure that it's all correct which is that's a whole that's listening to everything you've just recorded so that's all that time over again so that's a lot more time as well so i mean when you think about it and you think about the time that goes into it, it actually really does build up so i think gauging your pfh it has to do with like a few factors your equipment level that you're using mm -hmm. and um like how good a product are you able to produce and to like you get better as you go i mean my my pfh has risen mm -hmm. um from when I first started working to now, as I get better, as I produce a better quality, you know, recording, then I should aptly get get paid more. As your clout and following and uh, resume builds, I'm sure that also factors into PFH yeah. per finished hour um, in your rate as well. Yeah, I mean, it could be like it's a book that doesn't interest you at first, but you see, oh, it's narrated by this person. I love the books that this person narrates. You know, I guess yeah. I will check this one out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. so. Awesome. Awesome, man. Thanks again for, 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 ah, I will cut that out. <laughs> I will cut that out. <laughs> Thanks again today, Jace, for your time. And thank you guys for watching your come up until next time.